Hello ladies and gents, welcome to the channel. Um, here we are today. I'm going to try and keep this video as brief as possible um, for the efficiency of your watching. Um, I am on board the, the DC-9-30 and this is actually the ninth iteration of the test of, of the, the update that I've been sent. And um, I was actually, I had only just finished um, reviewing and creating a video to upload to YouTube for you guys of the 8th and then the dev sent me the ninth iteration so I'm literally jumped back within 24 hours into the sim again to do exactly the same thing with the ninth so here we are I'm gonna load this this bad boy up as as heavy as I can so there's a this is the idea I'm going to load up the dash 30 as heavy as I can do and then I will I will unload the dash 30 the, the dash 10 and make that as light as I can and I will test the takeoff and landing performance of both aircraft or both variants of the aircraft the dash 30 and the dash 10 the dash 30 at the at its heaviest and the dash 10 at its lightest to try and give you a sense of the the takeoff trim settings the flap settings for takeoff and the landing um the landing speeds the landing configuration um and this is all about what the nose of the aircraft is doing on takeoff and landing okay so i've loaded up the aircraft um on a takeoff weight of 107,000 pounds just shy of the max takeoff weight and i'm going to hit update very important you can see all of those uh, fuel um settings has synced i'm literally going to do absolutely nothing else guys it this is all about the takeoff and landing okay so the only thing i care about is just the weights and the trim settings so the takeoff weight is crammed right up at the very end of the spectrum here um just above 20. so we're going to use 20 as our range here and we're going to take off with flaps 15 is going to be a 4.6 on the trim so i'm going to come down here and i'm going to put in 4.6 which is about there now notice at the uh, for the dash 30 at the absolute pretty much the max takeoff weight the trim setting that we're getting is still at flaps 15 is still just is still within the green band which i think is probably one of the first times i've ever seen that so let's go flaps 15 so flaps 15 is set um we're gonna throw uh, an epr of 2.0 for takeoff and um let's just consult the um speed card let me just go grab the speed card for you guys and also make sure that my sim is being recorded it is so for a flaps 15 takeoff the v rotate is 136 knots so let's put in 136 knot knots as a bug on the um the re on, on my speedometer or my um my asi reference 136 is there okay and we're gonna take off so let's unpause my track ir let's take the brakes off and let's go let's um and speed is or, or thrust is set at 2.0 roughly now um the point here i'm not going to pull the nose up you can see my 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 stick is is completely neutral and we're going to look at the speed and we're going to see when the aircraft when the aircraft's nose begins to pull itself off the runway of its own accord um it should be just before or on its rotate speed if it is correct um I have a right hand crosswind coming in, so that's I'm just adjusting with the rudder. But um, I think the nose is getting a little bit squirrely now. Um, and there we go, that is the rotate speed and the nose is only now just lifting itself and that's me pulling it up now. And yes.
We are a heavy beast. Let's actually push max thrust now. We are a very heavy beast. Look at that. That was... Although, to be fair, guys, we are doing a takeoff at 5,000 feet. Um, so Denver... Uh, this is Denver, by the way, yeah. Denver is quite high. Not, not quite high. It's moderately high, let's say, as a takeoff... Um, as a takeoff runway. Um, okay, ladies and gents, we're back. Uh, we're on the final approach, and I chose a different runway for a headwind. And um, I've decided to go for a flaps 25 uh, landing because the altitude, the high altitude up here, um, and the very, very heavy weight of the DC, the DC-9 means that um, a flaps 40 landing is nigh on impossible. So the speed is, uh, the approach speed and touchdown speed is going to be 142. And um, my trim is almost all the way back to the backstop where, uh, at the number 10 position. Uh, but essentially what we're going to look at is what, what does the nose of the aircraft do? Once the main gear touched down, once the main gear touched down, I want to see if the nose hangs in the air without me, uh, without me applying brakes. I want to. I'm going to do. I'm going to do a, a, a landing roll with no brake app, application, and I'm going to see if the the aerodynamics of the aircraft is enough to make the nose uh, sink to the ground as soon as I as, as soon as I touch down the mains. So here we go. Power idle. Thrust reverses. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about through the deceleration. It's just about 80 knots now that the nose is beginning to sink. So I haven't touched the brakes these ent this entire time. Um... Now I'm braking. Now I'm applying full brake, and there we go. So, the, the point of that test, basically, is to say, okay, the aerodynamics of the aircraft, once the main gear touched the ground, the wings, especially, especially, excuse me, with the spoilers engaged, the wings aren't really generating lift at that, at that point. And so the question is, why is the nose hanging up in the air as if there's lift still being generated as the aircraft is decelerating from 142 knots all the way down to about 90 to 80 knots before the nose begins to lower itself of its own accord? Now, realistically, I'm sure a DC-9 crew would touch the main gear down on the landing roll and then immediately start applying brakes. And, and the, the brake application is what would bring the nose down smoothly, right? So you might be asking me, well, why are you paying, why are you bothering with this? What, what is the big deal? Well, the big deal is the accuracy of the aerodynamics of the aircraft. And um, so that's what we're trying to review. So the next test is going to be the DC-9-10 at a, at a very light configuration. And I'm going to take off exactly the same weather, same ambient temperature, same airport, so that you can have as direct comparison as possible. So, uh, I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, ladies and gents, here we are in the DC-9-10. Um, as you can see. Um, and again, it's going to be pretty much exactly what we did last time, except we're going to go down to uh, pretty much as low as we possibly can on the weights. So this is going to be a light aircraft test, and we're going to see how the uh, the aerodynamics compare to the previous. So I think last time I did this test on the eighth test iteration, I think I got it down to 6,000. Uh, I got it down to a horrendously low... Maybe it was about takeoff weight 60, 69. 
Yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Sixty-nine thousand um, pounds. Let's look at my takeoff speed references. Um, does do they even go down this low? Uh, yes, they do. So I'll go with seventy thousand pounds actually, because that's there. You go. That's actually perfect. Uh, let's go update and let make sure that they update. Yep, those will do. Let's turn on those center tanks as well while we're about it. And um, yeah, so the takeoff weight is there, and that is 19. Um, and let's take off with flaps of 20. So flaps 20. Actually, no, let's take off flaps 10. Let's take off flaps 10, um, which is 4.4. And again, that looks very, very far back on the uh, in the green band. But note, it's still within the green band, which is is always good. So that's what we're going to take off with. Again, it's going to be an EPR of uh, 2.0, and I'm going to just do a quick circuit and come around again. Uh, so the flaps 10, um, 4.4, and the fl the V rotate is 127. So let's set 127. By the way, while I'm about it, um, this is for the dev. Um, the fast, slow um, indicator does not work. And also, the um, slip and ball indicator does not work on, on either aircraft. And you'll see that happening, um, you'll see that happening as, as we watch. Uh, let me just 127. I've gone past it. 127. Right. So as, as we come up and we go through the V-rotate speed, you would expect to see the little dash go from too slow past here and up to too fast as we accelerate past that. And that just doesn't happen. And also the, um, the ball and slip indicator don't work. So those are points uh, to be fixed before the release of the update. Okay, let's, um, let's hit the throttle and see what happens. Let's get the parking brake off. Uh, make sure that we are on flaps 10. Yep, we are. And let's hit it. So we're going to watch and see at what point does the nose pull itself off of the runway without any interference from the elevator controls, which are currently, as you can see, set to neutral. My stick is neutral. All I'm doing is I'm just um, controlling the, uh, the, the center line of the, the runway. Okay, and the rotate speed is there, and the nose is only now just beginning to naturally pull itself off the runway. So I, I would call that exactly the same, exactly the same as the uh, the heavyweight dash thirty. So that's positive rate gear up. I love the TWA livery. Love the livery. Right, so we are now um, climbing away very nicely, and uh, let's get the flaps up. We should expect to see uh, much better performance at uh, Denver on a day like today in an aircraft that is significantly lighter than the uh, the Dash Thirty uh, fully laden. So, shouldn't seem to have shouldn't shouldn't have any problems for today. So, I'm just going to come back to you on final approach. Okay, here we are, uh, back, a uh, bit bit closer on the uh, approach now, and a little bit high, uh, sorry, well, my, the pappies say I'm high, but um, the glide slope says I'm low, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, I'm just going to fly in between the glide, the, the, the glide slope indicator and the pappies until we get closer. We're a little bit fast on the speed, but we can, we can bleed that off as we get closer. Um, the the aircraft the aircraft is actually pleasantly quite stable when you trim it correctly and you set the power. Um, you can control the the descent and the ascent rate with the using pitch and power very nicely. Um, here we go. Make sure that the yeah. Okay, here's the landing. Thrust idle. And reverses. And again, eh, 
it's about 80 knots. And now I will, I, I will apply brakes. So folks, that's a quick test just to see the the feeling of the you see there with the landing with the landing there my final trim setting was outside the green but it wasn't too far outside the green. Um, so the both tests I'm just going to turn the engines off for some peace and quiet. Um, both tests yielded um, a fairly consistent situation. The nose of the aircraft began to sink onto the the runway surface around 80 to 90 knots indicated uh, of its own accord and at least it was consistent uh, in both aircraft configurations um, and that leads me to believe that pretty yeah there we go that leads me to believe that I think I think the amount of testing that we've done to get to this point I kind of feel like I'm quite happy with that because I know realistically, in real, in the re every single real-world situation, every single pilot in the history of flying the DC-9, once those main gear touch the ground, he's beginning to in he's beginning to introduce manual braking. There's no there's no question of that. That's just what what you do as an airline pilot. The only reason I'm doing this test is because I want to see what the 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 center of gravity and the uh, aerodynamics of the aircraft are doing when you are not braking with with your wheel brakes yes i was using reverse thrust as well um but um yeah so i hope that was helpful um there are like i say a couple of weird isms that still need to be looked over this little fast slow cue and the um and the um ball and ball and pitch ball and pitch whatever you call it. Um, those two need to be reviewed. But apart from that, I think we're pretty much here. And with all of those changes um, introduced, um, I feel like this is a is an aircraft that we can now fly on VATSIM and fly c and control well um, on, on in the air. And we can respond to requests for uh, altitude changes and uh, heading changes and all of that that let's say beyond ATC or say intentions or VATSIM would be giving us um, I, I'm i quite happy to say that I could easily fly this on VATSIM at this point uh, no problems with this with this uh, test candidate so that's it from me um, hope you guys have enjoyed that and looking at just how much uh, of polishing has been happening under the hood um, and like I say this is the ninth iteration of of the of the update that the dev has sent me so he's he's been doing a lot of iterative work um over the the last months since this was first released and uh, hopefully we can get this um this this ninth candidate maybe the 10th or the 11th candidate all rolled into uh the first official update for this aircraft that should be pushed out to the public some point soon hopefully so that's it from me. Like I say, I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your days and uh, I'll catch you next time.